if we could lift our hands and lift our voice all across the house this morning. Oh, what a mighty God we serve on Sunday morning. Amen. I know where my help comes from this morning. Amen. I need help this morning. I come to the house of God to get some strength. Amen. Can you give him another hand clap of praise all across the house? Uh, over the last few days, I know there's a lot of things been happening and going on. But I was thinking, or I say I was thinking, I was praying over this week. And this psalm kept coming to my spirit. In 121, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence my help cometh. Amen. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Whatever you need this morning, my help comes from the Lord today. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands one more time? Let's lift our hands and lift our voice. My help this morning comes from you, God. Whatever I need is in this house today. Amen. Are you thankful to be in the house of the Lord? On Sunday morning, I'm thankful to be in God's presence with God's people. We have many, many, many prayer requests. Lots of people sick. Lots of needs. Lots of trouble. But I know a God that's able to help us today. Amen. If you'll put our names up this morning, if you need prayer, walk down to this front believing that God will heal you and God will touch you. I believe that today. Amen. Uh, if we'll go to him right now in prayer. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And we're thankful, Lord, that we know, God, the place to come when we need help. This morning, God, is in you and you're able, God, to touch every situation. God, you're able to move in every situation. God, you're able, Lord, to touch every need. God, you're able to touch every name. God, you're able, Lord, no matter how small or how big today, God, you can move in a powerful way, God. Lord, you can deliver somebody today. You can feel somebody, Lord. I believe that with your spirit today, God, the Holy Ghost, Lord, is a gift to us. And God, I'm claiming it right now, God. Do your work in a powerful way in this house today, Lord. Let your power power. Let your anointing, let your presence, God, be known today, Lord. And God, I pray, Lord, that you touch every need. You touch every situation. I pray, Lord, that you touch the Poole family, God. You touch Jimmy Burgess, Lord. God, you touch Mandy Smith, God. God, you touch Adam Griffin, Lord. God, you touch Lynn Cook, Bradley Evans, Dee Bradford, Julie Edwards. God, you're able, God, to move, God, because I will not, Lord, limit you in any way, God. Lord, I'm believing and I'm trusting and in the name, God, that's above every name that you're capable. Come on, somebody. Their faith in the house believing. My help comes from you today, God. My trust is in you today, God. Come on, somebody. Let the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, worship with them as they sing. We'll have a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Well, just over in the glory land I'll join that happy angel man Just over in the glory land Well, just over in the glory land there will that mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land. And I am on my way to those mansions fair, just over in the glory land. There to sing God's praise and His glory share, just over in the glory Land. Well, just over in the glory land, I'll join that happy angel man. Just over in the glory land. Well, just over in the glory land, there with that mighty host, I'll stand just over. Just over in the glory land And with 
kindred say there forever be just over in the glory land well just over in the glory land I'll join that happy angel man just over in the glory land well just over in the glory With the blood washed strong, I will shout and sing Just over in the glory land Glad hosannas to Christ my Lord and King Just over in the glory land Well just over in the glory land I'll join that happy angel just over in the glory land Well, just over in the glory land There with that mighty hope I'll stand Just over in the glory land lift our hands and love him this morning thank you Jesus for your goodness today hallelujah it feels good to be in the house of the Lord this morning amen if you're a guest with us today we're so glad that you're here with us this morning and we want God to touch your life in such a way amen that you're never the same again can you say amen don't forget tonight at 6:30. Is our Christmas concert. It's going to be a wonderful time of fellowship and fun, and uh, you don't want to miss that. Make sure you invite someone to come and be a part of that with you tonight. That starts at 6.30. This Thursday at uh, 12, 6 o'clock, December the 12th, the Ladies Mug Exchange. You don't want to be uh, missing that if you're a lady, and that's a great time. It's uh, they, they, I don't know exactly how they play the game this year, but... Uh, Amen. There's always one or two mugs that just everybody wants. and It's a great time. But um, you don't want to miss that. Connection, Saturday, December the 14th, is having an outing to Natchitoches. Adults only with the exception of children under one year of age. The deadline to sign up for that is Tuesday night. It's in the foyer. And then next Sunday night uh, is our Christmas gathering at 6 o'clock following a regular Sunday morning service at 10. Amen. Aren't you thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. What a great week the Holy Ghost has helped us with. Many people have been blessed, but also we're going through trials and tribulations. There's a lot of sick folks out. Also be much in prayer for Sister Amanda Poole and uh, Sister Carly and Sister Kenzie and their family. And Brother Darren Poole uh, passed from this life on Friday. And uh, his funeral will be here tomorrow. So make sure you be in prayer for them. And uh, quite unexpected and uh, quite shaking to the future for them. Let's ask God to help them and encourage them. Can you say amen? And uh, we are honored that you're here with us today. If you're a guest, especially if you're a first-time guest, we're so glad that you're here. And we are delighted that you've come to worship the Lord with us today. Why don't we make it friendly time this morning? Step across the aisle, greet someone, hug their neck. And tell them how good it is to see them in the house of the Lord today. Can you say amen?
Well, praise the Lord. Why don't we all start making our way back to our seats? As our ushers get ready to take up our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. I wonder if anybody has woke up today, I did, thinking a simple thought that I can love him because he first loved me. First John 4 and 19 tells us that we can love him because he first loved us. I don't know if you feel it, but I feel the love of God in this place this morning. A church family that's gathered around the holidays, there's just something special when we all come together. We can feel the love of God through one another, through rubbing shoulders, through friendly time, telling you, hey, brother, I love you. Hey, sister, I appreciate you. There's nothing like the church we have here in Christ Temple. Before we go any further this morning, we want to take a few moments and honor a couple special, special people to all of us. Just recently, the anniversary pastor and sister wells passed their 19th wedding anniversary there it is and we wanted to take a moment to do what we could to present a card to them to honor them and to tell them how much we love and appreciate them for all that they do for all of us thank you sister wells she's over there playing the piano Thank you, church. I love you very much. I love being your pastor. Most of all, I love doing the will of God, serving the Lord together. Thank you for always remembering and always being kind. And um, 19 years, I didn't realize we was that old. Amen. <laughs> we are. At least I am. God bless you. Let's have good church today. Amen. Hey! 
Remember what mercy did for you. You ought to lift your hands and praise him. Thank you for salvation today. Thank you for washing my sins away. Hallelujah. Let's love him all over the house this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a good spirit is in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Thankful for the presence of God that we can feel. And uh, thankful for this music team and this band singers for all the effort practice and energy that they did they've been singing up here for about a week and a half getting ready for this concert tonight and uh, we're going to come and celebrate with them aren't we amen let's come and have a good time tonight and uh, we're just going to have a good time singing about Christmas and uh, you're going to be blessed and uh, so bring somebody with you go out today and find somebody and uh, say you don't, you don't want to miss it and bring them with you tonight. Let's have a great time together. Hebrews 13. Amen. Brother Tipton read from this text Sunday night, uh, Tuesday night. And uh, when he read it, there was a part of it that leaped out at me. And I have been reading over it and praying through it. And uh, I'm going to preach what I feel this morning for all of us here today. Remember to be in prayer and to be an encouragement for Sister Amanda and uh, Sister Kinsey and Sister Carly and Brother Adrian and Danny and Laney and uh, all the family. Very, very unexpected passing of their father and husband, 54 years old, and uh, was just not prepared for that in any way. And so let's uh, be much in prayer for them and be the church and uh, if you want to help them in any way uh, just come and see me after church and uh, we're going to be the church how about that amen aren't you doesn't it feel good to just be the church how many of you thankful for your church today amen amen let's continue to pray for all those that are sick and uh, quite a number of our children are sick and um, now I think a bunch of mamas are sick from taking care of sick babies but uh, let's pray this sickness out of town. And you say, amen, <laughs> whatever it is, amen. Some, some tests are saying it's RSV, some saying it's RV, some saying it's nothing. But uh, it's something, amen. And God's the healer of all of it. Hebrews 13 and 5. Brother Tipton read this first six chapters or verses of this chapter. Tuesday night, verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have for he hath said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee for he hath said amen and uh, we're going to make our way through the word of God to many of the places where God said I will never leave you nor forsake you Amen. I want to preach this morning. He won't fail. Amen. He won't fail. Let's ask God to help us, would you? Would you lift your hands? Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the spirit that we feel in this house this morning. We thank you for every person who's come today to hear the word of the Lord. And God, we ask you to be with us today. Minister to us, I pray, in Jesus' name. And everybody shout, Amen. God bless you for standing. You may be seated. Amen. 
The writer of Hebrews is um, writing in this last chapter of the book of Hebrews, and uh, we've talked about it before. Um, whoever it was that wrote the book of Hebrews, uh, to quote Brother M.D. Treese, he was one more smart man. And uh, some of the deepest theology uh, in the Bible is found in the book of Hebrews. Um, most scholars believe it was the Apostle Paul that wrote the book of Hebrews. Uh, some believe it was Apollos. Uh, there's even a little bit of uh, conjecture that it was uh, Priscilla that wrote the book of Hebrews. And uh, that's why she didn't name herself as the author. I don't know who wrote it. Uh, I personally uh, lean, uh, it depends on how I'm studying, I either lean between Paul or Apollos. Uh, but either way, he was deeply um, in rhythm with the Old Testament. He writes uh, connecting the New Testament, connecting Jesus Christ uh, as our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He's intensely aware of Old Testament lineage and Old Testament theology and uh, is not afraid to bridge it into this new covenant. And uh, as he is writing, and I won't re-preach what Brother Tipton preached, and if you did not hear it, go back and listen to it, Tuesday night's message. Um, also this morning, the internet, for some reason, the last Sunday, a couple of Sundays, um, we have the fastest internet that you can get in Gina, and uh, for some reason this morning, we don't have enough broadband or bandwidth to stream, but we got it recorded, so this will be up right after service, but um, anyway, so, uh, but he is writing, Brother Tipton preached it, let brotherly love continue, he preached about all that, prayer, keep ourselves in prayer, keep ourselves connected to God by calling on him, praying unto him. But as he was reading his text, when he read verse five, uh, let your conversation be without covetousness and uh, be content with such things as you have. And most of our brains go a certain direction about that. But as he read this statement, for he hath said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I was uh, beginning to think about the God that would be that kind of God. Amen. Many times we misquote it. We quote, quote the proverb uh, that he's a friend that sticketh closer than the brother. That's really not talking about God. That's talking about real people, friendships that are developed. The book of Proverbs is talking about if you want to have friends, you've got to show yourself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. How many of you got friends that are closer to you than some of your own family? But um, God uh, is a friend that can or does stick closer to us than a brother. But as uh, Brother Tipton read this, uh, my mind began to work. And, and uh, for the last few days, I've been walking down a, a road that's, not very pleasant and as we were in the hospital and praying with the family and trying to make uh, extremely difficult decisions and, and you're trying to find God in every place that you're at. How many of you have ever been in a place in your life where it was hard to find God? Is it all right to be that vulnerable this morning that, that you're in a situation and, and maybe it's hurt or maybe it's things that people have said or maybe it's a situation that's financial or maybe it's a, a marriage situation or a sickness situation and you're trying your best to find where God is. What, what, what is God doing? And we have all these old uh, quotes or cliches and they're good uh, when you cannot trace his hand you can trust his heart amen all of these things but I, I submit to you today that, that even the very best intentions and the very best words that are spoken by ourselves or by others amen begin to uh, uh, it, it,
it's sometimes it's thin to hang on to somebody that, that says it's going to be okay, brother, when you know the score. Can I, can I preach like this this morning? It, man, it, it's, it's hard when somebody comes and encourages you and slaps you on the back and says, Brother Boney, it's going to be okay. Amen, yeah, but, but their back ain't hurting. Uh, somebody that comes up to you and says, it's going to be okay, but, but they don't have too many bills at the end of the money. Can you say amen? Or as the old preacher said, there's too much month at the end of the money. Uh, I've been there before, and many of us have. And, and, uh, but, but I want you to understand something and where I'm going to preach. I'm not preaching a very deep sermon this morning, but I am going to preach something that I believe you can sink your teeth into it. Amen. Because the, the writer of Hebrews gave us a promise that, that we can hold on to today. It's, it's something stronger, Brother Joe, than the words of your pastor. It's something stronger than the words of a brother in the church. It's something stronger than a friend or a family member that's says it's going to be all right, but that's not what the writer said. The writer said, he hath said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. I'm preaching to families this morning. I'm preaching to saints this morning. I'm preaching to somebody who's got a maddening sickness uh, that just will not go away. Uh, I'm preaching to you today. It wasn't the preacher that said it, and it wasn't Brother Daniel that said it, and it wasn't even the writer of Hebrews who said it. God said it. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I don't know what you're facing this morning. I don't know what your, what your pathway looks like over the next month or two, but I want to preach to you. There's a God that won't fail you. That's not my words. That's his words. He hath said Come on, preach with me on a Sunday morning. I know it's Christmas time and we've already got into presents and turkey, but I'm preaching some faith into your spirit today. Hey Amen, I'm giving you word. They're not from me. They're not from my encouragement. It was God that said it. Brother Roger, he won't leave you. Sister Meadows, he won't leave you. Sister Mandy, he won't leave you. Sister Mandy, he's not gonna forsake you. He didn't, I didn't say that. He said it. He said it. For he hath said I wonder, is there anybody that feels a little bit of worship in your feet this morning? Come on, church, get on my back and let's go together. I'm preaching to you. I don't care what you're looking at. I don't care what the numbers say. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the situation dictates. He said, he He said, I will never leave you. He had said. And this New Testament writer with an Old Testament understanding begins to tell stories from the Old Testament. Where is he getting this faith? Is he just rattling, Brother Buster? Is he just putting words in God's mouth? No. That's the great thing about the writer of Hebrews. He knew what he was talking about. The first place we see it is Genesis 28. There's a young man named Jacob. And uh, he is running for his life. <laughs> and uh, he ought to be. You say amen. He stole from his father. Stole from his brother. Manipulated. Cheated, dirtbag, scoundrel. It's all right. You can say amen. He was. I mean, I can't think of a worse fellow than, than somebody that would deceive their own father, take advantage of their own father and their mother. And, uh, but there's a lot of theology there that I don't want to get into. But he's running away from all this. Because Esau said, if I catch him, I'm going to kill him. And, and this is the, the most truthful thing about weasels. And Jacob was a weasel. He knew that if Esau did catch him, he was going to kill him. He didn't think about, hey, I might be able to, I might be able to take him. I might. No, no. Jacob knew if Esau finds me, it's over. And he's running. 
keeps running. And he's running from responsibility for his actions. And he lays down at a place to take a nap. And uh, he's going to sleep for the night. The sun went down. And uh, I mean, he's not in a great place because he's sleeping on stones. The Bible said he had a stone for a pillow. Amen. I don't know how tired you have to be to use a rock for a pillow. And the place where he's at doesn't have any smooth rocks. It's rock, it's rugged, old craggy looking rocks. And he's up in the mountains of Paran and lays down on the bed of, of stones and gets himself as comfortable as he can and on this rocky pillow and he goes to sleep. But as he's asleep, the Bible says that the heavens opened up and he began to see a dream of a ladder that was set in the earth and it reached to the heaven and behold upon this ladder he saw the angels of God ascending and descending on it. I'm just preaching the Holy Ghost right now. And this lying, cheating, manipulating, supplanting weasel sees in a vision that God's power and God's presence and God's angelic host are doing something. There's something that's really important for us to see. That ladder was not set up in heaven reaching into the earth. The Bible said it was set up in the earth and it reached into the heavens and into the heavens there were ascending and descending angels. What does that mean? That means that God has positioned himself to work where we are. He said, you've got to see it, Jacob, before you ever understand anything else. I'm preaching to you this morning that there is a spiritual action that is going on beyond what you can see. It's not set up in the heaven where it cannot be reached. It's set up in the earth and intermingling in between this world of reality and the world of spiritual realities. There is action and equation and commerce going on and God speaks to Jacob and says, Jacob, don't ever forget what you looked at on this night. Don't ever forget that when you cannot see it, there is action going on in the spirit world. When you cannot see it, you may be sleeping on a rocky pillow, but happening in this place is a spiritual reality that is beyond your comprehension. Jacob woke up and he said, surely, I feel it right here on me. I feel I'm fixing to preach to you, church. If you want to get past whatever it is we've been in, get on board with me right now. Jacob woke up and said, the Lord was in this place, and I knew it not. you got to get your mind made up that wherever you find yourself, whatever it is you're facing, you may be sleeping on a rock. He's still there. He's working. His realities are beyond your ability to understand. And out of that ladder, God spoke to Jacob. And he said, I am with thee. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. He said, (laughs) Brother Daniel, it was God that said it. I am with you. And will keep thee. Watch this. The Lord is in this place. That's what Jacob said. But what God said, I'm with you. And I'm going to keep you in all the places whithersoever thou goest. I'm not just in this place, Jacob. I'm not just here at this holy house. I am going to keep you in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave you. I will not forsake you until I have done that which I have spoken of on 
come to thee. I'm preaching to you this morning that I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what the enemy says. God's not going to quit until he's done what he wants to do. Somebody needs to leap to your feet this morning and grab a hold of your faith that God's not done with me. He's not done with you. He that begun a good work shall perform it. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to keep you in all the places whither thou goest. Wherever you find yourself, I'm going to keep you. When you find yourself flat on your back, brother, brother the phony, I'm going to keep you. When you find yourself, as Paul wrote in Corinthians, as the ministers, whether you're in honor or dishonor or lying or cheating or truth or whatever you find yourself, he said, I'm going to be with you. I'll be with you. And that's not just your ministers. He's talking to you. For he has said, elbow your neighbor and tell him, he said, he's not going to leave us. I'm going to keep you until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. It doesn't stop there. Deuteronomy 31 and 6. To Israel, through the mouth of Moses, and Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. Verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. That's why the writer in Hebrews said, it ain't my words and it ain't the words of somebody. He said it. God said it. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to preach it till you get it in your soul this morning. Hey Amen. You need to leap to your feet and somebody needs to understand God's not going to quit on you. God's not going to leave. Young person, you may not be able to find your way, but God's not going to give up on you. Young married couple, you may be looking at a bleak future, but God's not going to quit on you. You may have buried a child. You may have buried a loved one. You may have buried a friend, but he's not going to leave you. It's not going to fail. Be strong. With good courage. To Joshua and Joshua 1 and 5. As Joshua goes into the land of promise, facing the dark realities of leading a group of people that even Moses, the greatest leader in all the world, couldn't lead successfully. God said to Joshua, be strong. I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I'm not going to quit on you, Joseph, Joshua. And I'm not going to fail. See, that's the thing about us. We, we, we may fail. But God can't fail. David said, the God that watches over me, he doesn't sleep nor slumber. Neither is his arm short nor his ear heavy. He's not going to fail. Your friends may fail. Your family may fail. Your spouse, your children may fail. But he won't fail. I'm not going to leave you. I wonder, is there anybody here this morning? I, I, I'm asking for a, a very strategic response. I wonder, is there anybody in this church that's lived a little while? That's seen some dark days and some hard times and some things that defied understanding and defied resolution that will stand up in this house this morning and lift your hand and say, God has never failed me. I wonder, is there anybody here? Look, come on, this isn't just, this isn't just hype. He hasn't failed. He won't fail. He's not going to fail. God doesn't fail. Hey Amen. My prayers may not get through, but God doesn't fail. He may not do it the way I want to, but he doesn't fail. I wonder, is there anybody that will testify this morning? He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He's never quit on me. He hath said. Hey Amen. Let's clap our hands and praise him this morning. Woo. You be seated. To 
Solomon building the temple. First Chronicles chapter 28. David This is where I want to leave us here this morning. David is ready to pass from this life. He has prepared for the building of the temple. He's gathered gold, he's gathered wood, he's gathered silver, he's gathered materials and all kinds of fabrics, precious stone, without number, the Bible says. And as he is preparing to leave this life and leave all of this to his son Solomon, this is where I want to preach this morning. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and do it, build it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. And I feel an old grandpa, grandma spirit in the house this morning. I wish I was about 75 years old so I could preach this the way it ought to be preached. Because as old David is prophesying, he's seen a lot. Brother Nathan, he's, he's seen a lot come and go. He's made mistakes. He's made epic mistakes. He's been forgiven. He's been cleansed. He's been changed. He's seen victory after victory and defeat after defeat. He's seen all kind of stuff. He's seen his house burned down. He's seen his family taken away. He's seen dreams destroyed. He's seen sons turn on him and die. Seen a lot. But to his son, as he is prophesying and preaching from an Old Testament theory that I have preached to you from Genesis to Jacob to Deuteronomy to Israel and Joshua, now to Solomon, he says, the Lord God. Then he stops. He's preaching in a grand elevated language about the Lord God of Israel. Be strong, Solomon. Fear not. Do it for the Lord God. Then he said, even my God. He's not just God. He's not just the God of Israel. He's my God. He will be with you. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house. He said, I want you to know something, Solomon. I walked down a long road. I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the right. He said, he's not just God. He's my God. Let me tell I wonder, is there anybody here that's got a testimony in your spirit that you want to preach to somebody this morning whose faith may be sagging? He's my God. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will be with you until the end. Jesus said it in Matthew 28. I will be with you always even to the end of the year. But there's some conditions attached to all of this. Every one of these people even the commandment from Jesus in Matthew 28. Those people that he is with and the people he will not fail and he will not forsake. There's a, there's a condition about all of them. And this is that condition. They're fulfilling the purpose of God in the earth. Jesus didn't just give us a blanket. Brother Boney and say, I'm going to be with you, old timer. Even till the end. Because connected to that verse is Matthew 28 and 19, 18 19. Go ye therefore 
into all the world. Preach the gospel unto them. Baptize them in the name. We know the name of the Father. We know the name of the Son. The name of the Holy Ghost. It's Jesus. Go. Preach the gospel. Baptize. Do the work of God. Sacrifice for your brother. Sacrifice for your friends. Sacrifice for your community. And I will be with you until the end. Even the end of the age. I want to preach to you this morning. If you're seeking after God and His will and His purpose, he will not fail you. And I leave you this, Matthew, Philippians 4 and 19. Paul writing to the Philippian church who has just made a great sacrifice of financial giving to him they sent him a gift while he was in prison and to this little church that didn't have much who out of their love and abundance sent to their brother in bonds as he's beginning to die listen to the faith that's in this He's, he's in prison. Most likely he was in house arrest when he was writing Philippians. This is what he said. But my God. <laughs> he won't fail. Solomon, he's my God. He's not going to fail you. He's not going to forsake you. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto our God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you. Chiefly they that are Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. My God shall supply. Stand with me all over the house. to help you today church I've been living for God a long time I've been going to church for 41 years the first place I ever went was to church I know where all the gum is stuck underneath the pews Better not be none in this house. But in the church I grew up in, there was gum stuck all under the pew. Somewhere in that little old church down there, my name's under there. One night I had a pen, just thought that was a good idea. I've been going to church a long time. I've seen just about every kind of thing you can imagine Brother Terry said if you live for God long enough you'll see every story in the Bible played out I haven't seen them all but I've seen a lot of them I've watched people go to the break 
and make it. I've watched people put their last $10 in the plate. And God bless them to become multimillionaires if you count money as a blessing. I've watched families sacrifice vacations to give to the building fund. I've watched families swept up with some sort of horrible sickness that they had no coverage and no help for. And all of a sudden, things just begin to happen. Brother Wells, you're just bragging. No, 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 no. I'm preaching to you. Brother Nathan, I've been preaching almost 25 years. God has supplied every one of my needs. Never one time has he failed us. But this is what I want to leave you with. This is what I want to preach to this church, this congregation, in this Christmas season. With the exception of maybe one or two times. In fact, the only time I remember that it coming from an outside source is the story that I tell often. Sister Wells and I had been married about a year and a half. We were still in Coleman Church, back in the Green Church. Was it Brother Morgan, Jeff Morgan? Brother Jeff Morgan was there preaching. And a lot of times back then, our, our church, especially when one of the Morgan brothers was preaching, Brother Mark Morgan and Brother Jeff, people would just start coming out of the pews and giving money. We didn't have any money. We was living on love. <laughs> Worked. We was we was eating pretty good too. We had two hundred and fifteen dollars in our bank account, and we thought we was doing good. I was on the platform. I don't recommend this. My wife was sitting over. It was have been reversed. I would have been sitting over there, and she would have been sitting over here. She looked up at me and she said, How much? I could read lips, you know. How much? And stupid, without wisdom, I said, Whatever. Thinking she would use a little judgment. It's Sunday. We got, a, we got $215 to make it till Friday. She wrote a check for $200. Put it in the offering. On our way home, I finally worked up the courage and said, how much did you give? She started crying. She said, I gave $200. That's the only number I could hear. <gasps> okay. Nobody sung. Nobody started singing. He won't fail. I got up the next morning. I drove to the gas station. I put $14 in my little Toyota Tacoma for the week. Drove all the way to Birmingham. About 8.30 that morning, my wife called me. She said, you're never going to believe what was in the mailbox this morning. A check from State Farm for $790 something dollars. That's the only time in my life that I remember that, that God's provision came through anyone other than the people of God. Every other time in my life, Brother Nathan, some man in the church would walk up, shake my hand, and there'd be something in it. 
or somebody would come by with a basket or somebody would come by and what are you preaching brother Wells? I'm preaching that living for God there's a there's a thing that happens in the body you know what it is brother Roger when it's working in harmony you start feeling what God's feeling love for somebody at the core of the, of the birth of the church, the Bible says they had, and this is not what I'm preaching, they had all things common. And the Lord added to that church. Because here's what it takes, church. This is the same faith. The same faith it takes to know that God will supply the need is the same faith it takes to know that I can be the need supplier and He won't fail. Preaching to innumerable needs this morning. Not just financially. I'm preaching to needs of spiritual importance. I'm preaching to emotional needs. I'm preaching to deals that are that are, no one else knows yet. And I know I'm in the Holy Ghost. And I'm preaching to you. Not what your past. This is not me coming along here to tell you a little word of encouragement. I'm telling you, God said, I will never leave you will not fail you. I want you to close your eyes all over this house. If you don't have the Holy Ghost here today, you need it today. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, you need to be baptized today before dark. Amen. But if you're here today and you have a need in your life, you have a need that, that God, I don't know how we're going to make it. I don't know how we're going to get through it. I don't know how this, I don't know why this won't stop. I'm preaching to you today. He said, I won't leave you, and I won't fail you. They're getting ready to sing. And if you're here today, one of two ways. If you know God is with us, and you want to come up here and testify to somebody, Brother Joe, my God, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. If you want to come up here and find somebody and tell them like David told Solomon, the Lord God, my God will not fail you. And if you're here today and you have a need that only God can meet, I want you to make your way to this front and lift it up to Him. Lift up your heart with your hands and say, God, I know you won't fail me today. I know you won't forsake me today. I'm going to be with you until the end of the age. I'm going to be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. As they begin to sing, I wonder could we reach out here? You said that, that you, you won't forsake me. me. You're right beside me. The Lord is. That is all that matters. I'm singing to somebody this morning. He's not going to leave you. You said that you Come on, you won't Mama. I know you're worried about that new baby you're that you right want so bad. Me. You hear this man that of God. He won't fail you. He won't fail you. He won't fail you. Come on, dear saint. I know it looks grim right now. He's not going to fail you. He's not going to fail you. You never. He won't forsake. He said. Come on, testify to your own heart. He said. He said. He said. You are covenant keeping God. Lo, I'll be with you always. Lo, I'll be with you always. Even to the end. The covenant keep it. Come on, find somebody and encourage them. Find somebody and join up with them and pray with them. He won't leave you. My God won't leave you. My God's a healer. My God's a strength giver. Covenant keeping God.
Tell your own self. Tell your heart. He said. He said. For he has said. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. He won't fail you. somebody by the hand join up with somebody in prayer and tell them he said it he said it he said it he won't leave you he won't forsake you brother Jeff I don't know where you're at this morning I don't know if you can hear us online he's not going to leave you brother Jeff he's a healer he's not going to forsake you the Lord won't keep Yes, yes, yes. Come on, reach out and help somebody today. He said it. He won't smite. The Lord is. He won't fail. He won't fail. I 
telling you there's some victory in this house right now for somebody. Oh, he won't fail. Church, the Holy Ghost is here right now. I want you to close your eyes and lift your hands. If you've been living for God for any length of time, you'll be able to do this. I want you to remember back. Maybe it was standing in a hospital room. Maybe it was looking at a banking ledger. Maybe it was standing beside a sick baby that couldn't get well. But you felt a feeling of hopelessness. You didn't know what to do or where to turn. And somebody showed up and prayed the prayer of faith and God brought you through it. They're about to sing this bridge one more time. I want you to reach back to that day and say, I've seen it. I'm not just talking about it. I've seen it with my own eyes. I watched God raise the dead. I watched God. Brother Ricky, I watched God raise the dead. I watched God raise up young people that were sick in their body. Come on. Come on, church, it's time to rejoice. Oh. Somebody needs to leap to your feet. Begin to rejoice. I've seen it. 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 Keep this house today there's going to be a lot of voices some of them will be voices of doubt some of them will be voices of friends and family in your life 
Some of them be the enemy of your soul, the devil. He will tell you a lot of things. He's going to provide a future. Say, this is what's going to happen. This is your answer to them today. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us. He said, Brother Jeff, he hath said, he won't leave me. That's your answer. God said, he won't leave me. And he won't fail me. Hallelujah. I want you to turn and find somebody. Minister to them in Jesus' name. Encourage somebody before you go. Bring somebody with you to the house of God tonight. 6.30 Christmas concert. Bring somebody to be blessed to minister to. We love you. God bless you in Jesus' name.